Welcome to episode 95 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folk Tales. My name is Milo the Butterworth, and today we continue the saga of Thorstein, where Yokel finally finds Thorstein, and a mighty battle ensues in chapters 25 and 26 of Viking Sun. Chapter 25. Now, we must return to Yokel, Neorf's son, who ruled the uplands after the death of Neorf and Viking. They had preserved their friendships well until their death. Yokel won ships and fee and was a daring Viking, treating his soldiers fairly well, but no better. A few years passed in such a manner that he was the most noted Viking, harrowing the most of the time in the waters of the Baltic. Thorstein and Bella had not been at home long before they busked themselves for, for herring expeditions, and sailing first down along the coast of the country, then through the Sound. They harried in Saxland during the summer, and got a great booty, consisting of gold and silver and many other costly things. Afterward, they intended to sail home, which they did, and having reached the mouth of Limfjord, they were overtaken by a violent storm, which carried them out into the sea, and in a short time the ships were separated. Then the sea began to break over the ships from both sides, and all the men were engaged in bailing out the water, and it came to pass that this storm drove the dragon Ulid, tossed by the waves ashore alone at Borgen's home. At the same time, Yogel also landed there with ten ships, all thoroughly equipped both as to weapons and crews. And now, as might be imagined, Yogel attacked Thorstein and his men. Thorstein was poorly prepared, for he and his crew were very much exhausted from hard work and from being tossed about on the sea. A severe and bloody battle was fought, and Yogel, being very venomous, kept cheering his men on, telling them that they would never have a better chance to conquer Thorstein, and said he it will be an everlasting shame upon us if he escapes now. Then they attacked Thorstein and his men, not letting up until all his men bad fallen. So nobody but Thorstein alone remained standing on the dragon. But still, he defended himself bravely so that for a long time they could not give him a single wound. At last, however, it came to pass that they came so near to him that they could stab him with their spears. But the most of them he cut out of his reach, for the sword Anger Valdil bit as keenly as ever. Then Yokel made a desperate attack and stabbed Thorstein with his spear through the thigh. At the same time, Thorstein dealt Yogel a blow, hitting his arm below the elbow and cutting the hand off. Meanwhile, they succeeded in surrounding Thorstein with shields and capturing him. But it was near night, so they thought it was too late to put him to death. And so fetters were put on his feet. His hands were tied with a bowstring, and twelve men were set to watch him during the night. When all had been brought ashore, excepting these twelve men, together with Thorstein, he said, Would you prefer that you amuse me, or that I amuse you? They said that he could not care much for amusement now, as he was to die immediately on the morrow. Now, Thorstein, finding himself in close quarters, conceived a plan of escaping, and in a low, whispering voice he said, at what other time could I need you more than just now? My dear fellow Sindra, had not all our friendship already been broken off? Then darkness came upon the watchmen, and they all fell asleep. Thorstein saw Sindra going along the ship approaching him and saying, You are in close quarters, my dear fellow Thorstein, and it certainly is high time to help you. He blew open the lock. Then he cut the bowstring off from his hands, and Thorstein, who thus had become free, now seized his sword, for he knew where he had left it, and in turning against the watchman, he killed them all. 
hereupon Sindra disappeared. But Thorstein took a boat and rowed ashore and went home to Segen. This meeting with Bella was a very happy one, and to the latter it seemed as if he had recovered Thorstein from the domains of hell. Early the next morning after the battle, Gilkel woke, happy in the thought that he was about to take the prisoner and kill him. But when they came to the place where they had left him, the prisoner was gone, and the watchman dead. This was to him a great loss. Yuckel turned his prows homeward, greatly dissatisfied with his voyage, having lost Thorstein and received scars that could never be healed. Henceforth, he was called Yokel, the one-handed. The foster brothers, King Bella and Thorstein, gathered an army and went to the uplands, sending a message to Yokel and preparing a battle for him. Yokel gathered men, although on account of their friendship with Thorstein, many of his subjects sat at home, and thus, getting only a few, he durst not engage in battle but fled out of his land and went to Valen to his brother-in-law, Viljam. The latter gave him a third part of his kingdom to rule. King Bella and Thorstein conquered the uplands, whereupon they returned home and kept quiet. Sometime later there came men from Valen to Thorstein. They had been sent out by Jokel. Their errand was to offer Thorstein, in the name of Jokel, terms of peace. They were to have a meeting in Limfjord, to which both should come with three ships each, and there they should settle their dispute. Thorstein was very much pleased with this offer, confessing that it was contrary to his wish that he had had troubles with Jokul, saying that he had entered into them unwillingly on Niorf's account, and on the account of the latter's friendship with Viking. Now this was agreed upon. The ambassadors returned home, but in the summer time, Thorsten bussed himself for going abroad, taking with him Ulaid and two other ships. To Bella, this voyage did not seem a hopeful one, for he looked upon Jokel as a treacherous and faithless man. He advised Thorsten to send spies ahead and find out whether everything was done faithfully on Jokel's part, and having found this out, they should return and meet him in sound. They did so and came back reporting that Jokel and his party were lying at anchor in Limfjord and keeping perfectly quiet. So they proceeded on their voyage till they reached the fjord. Here they held a meeting in the place agreed upon and came to mutual satisfactory terms on the conditions that the loss of men, the wounds and the blows should be considered even on both sides. But Jokel should get his kingdom back and not to be tributary to anybody. Thorstein's kingdom in the uplands should fall to Jokel's lot, in compensation for the loss of his hand. On these conditions, they were to be fully reconciled. Then Jokel went home to his kingdom and kept quiet. Thorstein and Bella went home to Sogen, settled in their kingdoms, and made an end to all warfares. Ingeborg, Thorstein's wife had already died, and Ingeborg, Bella's daughter, had her name. Frithof grew up with his father. Thorstein had a daughter who was called Vifreya, who at this point of our saga has reached the age of maturity, for she has begotten in the cave of Skelinjofja, and there she was born too. In wisdom she was like her mother. She got Angervadil after the death of her father Thorstein, and many excellent men are descended from him. By all, Thorstein was considered the most distinguished and most excellent man of his time with these contents. We now finish the saga of Thorstein, Viking's son, and it is a most amusing one. And here is where I end the saga of Thorstein for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.